Hey everybody, welcome to Prop Live, your weekly prop and costume making Q&A session. And today, we have a special treat from across the pond, all the way in Switzerland. It's Anna, but you know her as Folkenstall, aka Folkenstall Armory. Hello, how are you? Hello, Bill. Hello, guys. I'm fine. How are you doing? We're doing all right here. It's still only noon today, but it's a little later where you are. Yeah, it is. It's 9 p.m. And that's very nice of you to come hang out with us uh, and uh, spend your evening with us. We've got the chat hanging out. The prop tarts are down here. I got the chat figured out there. Looks like everyone's very excited to, to hang out with you for the next hour. Nice. Um, for those of you who are unacquainted, you have a little website called Folk and Soul Armory. You want to tell us a little bit about how you got started doing this uh, this crazy thing? Oh God! Okay, um, yeah, it's Falkenstall, and um, I started like was it by the end of two thousand and twelve? It was um, actually it was by accident. I've always um, drawn a lot, and then I had a like a, what was it? A art blog. You probably know this mm -hmm. this kind of art blog. And then, um, yeah, just played video games for a couple of years, probably two years. And then um, I played Skyrim, so I played <laughs> Skyrim a lot. And somehow this got, I just got inspired to um, do weapons because uh, I wanted to have um, a lot of weapons from the game. And I couldn't really find online. I mean, they do have merchandise from Skyrim, but I... They have hoodies, they have mugs, but they just don't have weapons. Right. And so uh, you know it when you um, try to have something like weapons or any other replicas, you just do it yourself. That's right. That's uh, how I started. It's funny how, how similar your story is to mine. Yeah, you just okay. See, you see that thing in the video game and you're like, I need it. I need it so bad and it doesn't exist, so I have to make it. And... Uh, and of course, you've made tons of stuff from Skyrim. We've made tons of stuff from Skyrim and Fallout. We've made a lot of the same things, actually. Really? Yeah. Well, you made. I made a Mr. Handy, but he's only this big. Oh yeah, the tiny one. I've seen this one. Yeah. I made a tiny one, but you made you made a really big one. You want to yeah. tell tell uh, us a little bit about that project? Well, Coldsworth. It, it, He's actually standing in my entrance oh right my now. Goodness. So when people come in, they just see Cotsworth. <laughs> but he can't really talk like uh, right now because I have to do all the voices and um, programming, and I'm just not ready for that. So uh, yeah, about Cotsworth, um, he's tall, about one meter sixty, about like I am, mm -hmm. and he's made of foam, um, Sintra, and cosplay flex. Cosplayflex is this um, thermoplastic. Maybe mm -hmm. you have heard of it. I don't know. It's similar, I would guess, to um, like Wonderflex or Warbla. Yeah. Yeah. Similar to Warbla. It doesn't have this uh, mesh inside. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. Um, that's amazing. And you've got blog write-ups for all of these things that are really, really detailed. Everyone needs to go to folkinstall.com. Obviously, we'll have tons of links down below to go check out all these builds that you've got these really, really detailed builds. Uh, but you've also got a book out, don't you? Yeah, I have a book out. Yeah, uh, all the cool kids yeah. are making books. and this All was... the cool kids. I'm not that cool, but yeah. <laughs> I just... No, because I was... Um, many people asked me about um, molding and casting. I was like, in, in, especially in Switzerland. And, and I couldn't really explain them everything. So I thought, um, yeah, let's write a book about it. I mean... Why not? And uh, I started this last year, and it took me a whole year to finish that book. Actually, yeah. it's really a hard work. And yeah, that's my book. That is great. Um, I uh, yeah. read through it, and I will tell you one thing that I really like are the the, the illustrations, the diagrams for describing mm -hmm. how molds are are put together. Like one part molds, two part molds multi-part molds i've got a uh i got a picture up on the screen right now so people can see some of these diagrams those are really really sharp i like that a lot thank you and that's available on folkinstall.com so everyone needs to go buy it right now because you will learn a lot 
And the photos and everything are top notch as well. Thank you so much. Very, very cool. Um, what else do we have here? Um, you're on uh, Facebook and Twitch as well? Oh, God, yeah. Um, Facebook is my main social media site. Mm-hmm. And I have now Instagram too, Twitter. Um, and with Twitch, I started um, two weeks ago. I started streaming every Friday. And so people can just tune in and see what I have on my workbench. Very cool. Yeah. That's super duper fun. All right, everyone, go follow. And if and everything is at falkenstall.com with all the all the great information for everyone. Yeah, you there. can you can just Google Falkenstall and you will find. Yep, you've got a shop there. You've got uh, the book kits, patterns, even yeah. shirts. My goodness. Yeah, only one shirt. One with shirt. My logo. Very very good. Cool. Uh, so what are, what are you working on these days? You got any fun projects to? to talk about um, right now um i have to finish a few commissions um mostly from skyrim and then this uh, actually tomorrow i will stream how i finish them it's the blade of woe oh yes and yeah we'll just um pour one or two today <laughs> until i go to bed and then finish them tomorrow so people can just see how i uh Finish them up with the uh, metal powder and uh, the grapes and everything. So, yeah. Awesome. Hold on. Ooh. I just realized I was going to show what I worked on, but it was off camera. <laughs> Ta-da. Okay. There we go. Well, I'm also making stuff from Skyrim. So this is the horned steel helmet. All foam, of course. Brittany did most of the fabrication on this. I did the horns and this part and the chain mail. So this is a, a team effort. But oh, we God, are we... really lady. I can't really see it not right now. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's probably a twenty seconds delay. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. that's that's the helmet so far, and uh, this one ended up a little bit big. But we've got a video up right now on our YouTube channel on how we built this, including free templates. And I did scale the templates a little bit better than we did for the the original guy here. So I just need oh, to. Okay, I can see it now. Yeah, I just need to find a seven foot tall Dovahkiin to wear this. <laughs> seven foot five that's that's a tall one yeah um so anyway if, if people want to get in on that and give that build a try we've got a full tutorial video and nice. free templates all up on our youtube channel let's see what else do we have here um oh and also we we just met you at dragon con that was, was that your <laughs> that was your first dragon con right it was my first dragon con yeah how was that experience for you Oh my God, it's so overwhelming. I mean, so many people have been there and we don't have this in Switzerland. It's full of people. Yeah. And uh, it was fun. It was great to meet all um, all the online guys yeah. I know. <laughs> and uh, no, we had we had so much fun, really. Fantastic. It was, well, nice to meet you. It was, it was good meeting you briefly. I, I'm bummed we didn't get to hang out some more, um, but yeah. we, maybe we'll... <laughs> We'll have to make our uh, make our way out to Europe here again pretty soon. Yeah. All right. You're welcome. Okay, cool. I want to go meet your giant Mr. Handy. I'll bring my little Mr. Handy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's oh. see. What else? We have a couple more things. Um, the Humble Book Bundle is live. And oh, yeah. uh, let me see here. Humble Bundle. Boop. We uh, we are participating. Uh, a couple of us are. Why is my my computer mad at me again? Just go to the website computer. Come on. <laughs> um, oh, it wants me to log in. I don't know. Anyway, Humble Bundle is a website that uh, sells usually video games in a in a uh, bundle, but they do books too. And a bunch of us are uh, including um, some more of our other friends like Harrison and uh, Svetlana. Mm-hmm. Um, Adam Savage has a little book in there. Uh, Sean Thorson has a book in there. Lots of good cosplay digital books, and it's a pay as you as much as you want sort of thing. And I believe to get like to the tier with everything, it's only like fifteen bucks, and that's I think fourteen books, and some of that money goes to charity. Um, so it's worth checking out. Humble Bundle. I want to open the website, but it's uh, displaying all of my personal information at this moment, so I'm not going to open it. <laughs> <laughs> oh god please don't yeah um humble let me see humble book bundle cosplay let me see if i just go straight to it there it is 
Nope, it still wants me to log in. Okay, never mind. But anyway, trust me, we'll have a link in the show notes. Even if you already have our books, it's still worth it to go get some of those other books. Sean Thorson's book is brand new, um, and he's an awesome guy, and it's worth it for that all alone. Um, there we go. I think I've covered everything. Uh, are you ready to take some questions from our wonderful chat? Sure, anytime. All right, good, because I'm going to start asking them. If you guys are live, watching live, and you want to submit some questions, punishedprops.com slash live. There's a form there. You can put your question in there. It'll get emailed over to us, and Brittany will dump it in my list of questions. And we need them. We only have a handful right now. So if you've got a technique question about prop and costume making or just in cosplay about cosplay in general, send us a question, and we will answer it. Um, and Evil Ted Smith is now hosting us. Thanks, Ted. Yay. Hey, thank you. Okay, next question comes from Candice Bielik. She was very uh, specific to say her name is pronounced Bielik. I And by the way, everyone, when you put your names in the in the form, I really appreciate adding phonetic spellings to them because I do I do tend to butcher everyone's names. <laughs> Okay, cool. Uh, Candace is talking about cold casting, something that you've done a bunch of. Um, he's doing Jamie Lannister's hand from Game of Thrones. He used brass powder and a rotocasting technique to do this, and he did some weathering with acrylic paint. Uh, but he noticed that it, after a while, it, the finish was dull, a little bit more dull. He's worried about buffing it frequently and polishing. The polishing may wear down through the metallic powder. Uh, is there are any ideas about sealing it or uh, how you might prevent that? Okay, um, I had this problem too. I just uh, buffed it out very um, lightly mm -hmm. uh, without scrubbing everything away. And then I, um, um, it was, I was uh, let me just get this thing. Um, Go for it. I'm yay. It, I'm keeping an eye on my 3D printer behind me, making sure it doesn't go rogue. I had some uh, uh, 3D printing mishaps earlier this week. <laughs> I can't find it right now, but it's called Easy Coat. Okay. Um, let's let me just type it in if that helps. Easy Coat. Sure. So like this, and it's just like a layer of resin, um, so it prevents it prevents it from um, yeah, so from um, from damage oh cool all right i've got it up here on my screen um it's a finishing resin yeah and exactly. you can get it on amazon prime how perfect is that perfect um i'm wondering what it what kind of coat it actually is it looks kind of like it's a milk consistency yeah uh it, it is and it's a one part um resin and you just brush it off uh, okay. brush it on the on your material and that's it actually that's awesome i'm adding it to my um shopping list on amazon right now <laughs> wow. that's cool i'll have to give that a try yeah. um yeah you can try it I, I really like it it's just um you have a glossy finish with it so you always have to um just f use a spray with uh, m a matte finish mm -hmm. Excellent. Cool. That's a really good tip. Um, I've done some cold casting and... Um, wait, do I have something here? Was this cold cast? That was This one was cold cast. and um, My buddy Will made this one. And yeah, it, after a while it just kind of gets dull. The outside layer ends up oxidizing a tiny bit. Um, and brass does kind of have a way of getting dull really fast. Um, but... Like you said, what you might do is just polish, like right before you go to a convention, just give it a quick polish, a light polish, yeah. so it looks all shiny and new. So there you go. See, it is pretty dull. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. just try Easy Coat. I'm, yeah. I yeah. just have a few of my props um, are coated with Easy Coat, and they survived. Awesome. Yeah. This is a, an example. This is the official um, coin strange coin that Bungie made and this is the one that will made um but this you can see how shiny it is because it is actual metal compared to how dull this got just over the last year or so so there you go good example all right great question candace let's keep moving here nick our pal over at modulus props says he's been using Plasti Paste as his support shell for slush casting molds but it seems all the cool kids are using epoxy for their shells 
What are the advantages of working with epoxy? Um, wait, so he's slush casting his mold with um, plastic paste? Well, he's using plastic paste as the, the jacket mold. Um, oh, okay, okay but, yeah. But he's seeing that a lot of other people are using um, fiberglass instead of the oh, plastic yeah, paste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've just worked with plastic paste, right. so I haven't tried this uh, fiberglass yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, uh, the plastic paste is dead simple. You don't need to add any um, any cloth to it. So yeah. you just mix it up and just slather it all over everything. Um, but it, it can get really heavy. So I'll give you okay. an For example, we did the, um, the District 9 rifle. The, the main mold for that is like four feet long. It's really big. And not only would that have been a ton of plasti paste, but it would, would have been ridiculously heavy. So we did the jacket mold using fiberglass. It's much thinner, less material, and much lighter. I mean, that mold still weighs like, I don't know, 40 pounds or something. It's really heavy. But um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's still just as sturdy, or probably even sturdier, and it's um, a lot lighter. But plasti paste is really easy. Yeah, it's easy for, uh, especially for beginners, mm -hmm. I would say. And if you have more experience, you can, of course, try um, the cloth and the uh, epoxy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing, too, with with, um, with the fiberglass is, uh, with, like you said, with those epoxies, is you can, since I have those materials now for the mold making, we use it for lots of other things, too. Uh, Plasti paste really only has one use. Whereas the fiberglass and the epoxy cloth we used when we built Reinhardt's helmet, it was 3D printed, but the inside was fiberglassed to make it really sturdy. So we just have a big bucket of epoxy on hand and a bunch of fiberglass cloth, and it's useful for many other things. Um, but there you go, Nick. Hopefully that helped you out. Um, I say if you have, if you still have pl plenty of plastic paste on hand, hand just keep using it. <laughs> yeah. Great question. Our next one comes to us from Orlando. I'm trying to make an orb type of prop that will glow green with LEDs and have some type of ribbon that will uh, make it look like it's flowing when I move it. Any suggestions? I'm not exactly sure what you mean by the ribbon that's flowing when it moves, but you've done some LED stuff in your... Um... Yeah, I've done... A few, yeah, not much, but uh, I, I'm not sure about the glowing orb. Still have to have more um, information about that. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Well, how did you do the LEDs for your plasma pistol? Um, I used an um, Adafruit uh, Pro trinket. Mm -hmm. So I load the program on it with the with the lights I wanted to um, illuminate the gun and. Uh, that was it. Very good. I'm actually ch chatting with Adafruit right now about a prop project that will have some lights in it. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I'm getting some of those NeoPixel rings that they make. Those look really neat. Yeah, uh, they're great. For the, uh, for the lights on your plasma pistol, um, I'm seeing a green uh, resin bit for the, the ports on the side. Are those just cast That's out of a mold? Um, the green bits, um, I've done for the, um, let me just get the gun. Oh yeah. That would be awesome and handy. There okay. you go. Yeah. Can you see it? Oh yeah. That's awesome. Perfect. Okay. So for, um, these, um, for these parts, I've just used a mold. Um, first molded the sculpted uh, just this piece and then molded it and then put resin in and the same actually here for those so what uh, which resin did you use for the uh for those um it was um smooth cast 326 okay as far as i remember yeah awesome That's well it. those look great i think so you could probably end up doing something similar um, for the orb, either casting something or maybe buying like a, a, a an acrylic ornament that's clear and then painting it and then putting some of those lights in there. They have acrylic balls. Yeah. Um, as far as the ribbon, I'm not quite sure what you mean with by that 
Orlando. So maybe a little more research, but definitely dip your toe into uh, what Adafruit has to offer. They have a really great blog with tons of tutorials um, and a whole section devoted to cosplay. So go check them out. I like those guys. Uh, we had them on an episode of Prop Live a little while ago. They're awesome. Mm. All right. Let's yeah. grab another question. Lady Cammy is working on maze boots from Overwatch. And I have the structure down using L200 foam. Okay, cool. There's a picture, too. Um, awesome. I'm going to dump the picture in the chat. Here we go. Boop. Very good. Um, I like it. It looks like it was wrapped in tape, and then the pattern was drawn on that tape. I like Oh, that. yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. I plan on context cementing a comfy yet somewhat disposable shoe onto the foam it, that would act as the sole of the boot. But I was wondering what type of foam to use for that. I'm not sure if L200 for the sole could hold up during wear and tear for BlizzCon. Would you recommend it go thicker or denser? Um, I think okay. I I wonder if she's asking if she if she's going to put foam on the very bottom of the shoe. Oh, it's just like a sole. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, actually, you are the foam snip, so yeah, <laughs> I would so probably you should know. I w it would be a little bit trickier to do, but I would try and make it out of rubber if I could, um, so that it's got some good traction. If you're really, really, um, uh, if you want it to be super awesome, you could sculpt your soles and then cast them in rubber. In fact, tested did a video on that with Frank Ippolito. We'll find okay. uh we'll find a link for that. But they actually made their own custom sole shoes and cast them in rubber. It may have been a silicone or a urethane rubber that they cast out of the mold. But if you want to go super legit, you could just make real sole shoe soles, um, or you could just or you could use foam. Um, the, she was thinking of going with something denser, maybe like L four hundred. You might try and make it out of something like L four hundred or just floor mat foam, and then do some tests to see if you've got good traction and test on different surfaces. So walk, and the, the big test is going to be walk on smooth concrete. Um, I know our buddy Chad was walking around in his giant um, Reinhardt costume uh, at TwitchCon, and he had. He had to be very careful on the smooth concrete because on carpet it was fine, but on smooth concrete it was very slippery. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Craft Castellone in the chat says he used floor mat foam for the bottom of his boots. He contacted cement, uh, contact cemented leather on the bottom, and that worked perfectly. That's cool. Oh, nice. Um, so there's a couple of things for you to try, Orlando, especially with some or not Orlando, Lady Cami. Sorry. Um, especially anything that you've got to count on that traction, do some tests beforehand. Um, personally, I've never made a costume where I did anything to the bottom of the shoe. Have you ever tried anything like that? Uh, no, never, actually. I've always had, um, like, boots for mm -hmm. the costumes, and then I just worked over the boots, and that were my cosplay boots. Yeah. That's all, yeah. I think if, if anyone watches the um, uh, Twitch con costume contest i was i couldn't sit down i couldn't bend my legs when i was sitting up on stage so you can see the bottom of my mechanist shoes and those are definitely sneakers like you can kind of see that my sneakers are peeking out a tiny bit <laughs> cool yeah um all right everyone has to draw a line somewhere i draw my line at making the bottom of my shoes slippery <laughs> Good question, Lady Cammy. You've got a little bit of trial and error ahead of you, but I think you, you'll figure it out. Um, cool. Oh, Matt, uh, Matt, who is also in the chat there, is curious about the Humble Bundle sales. He says, do you get money for the Humble Bundle sales? You get to pick how much money I get. Uh, when you go to buy something with the Humble Bundle, uh, there's sliders that say how much the Humble gets, how much I get, and how much, or how much the, the, the writers get. And then how much the charity gets. There's a default. The default is we get something like 60%. But you can decide to give us all your money. Or you can decide to give all the money to charity. It's up to you. Um, which is pretty great. I think most people end up just going with the default. Which is fine by me. Yeah. So that's kind of how that works. Again, humblebundle.com. And then go to the book section. Uh, there you go. Okay. Oh my god. Some... Uh, someone Belia one I don't know which um, it's a three um, 
she she or he just got my book hey nice thank all you all right that's so awesome much. everyone in the chat needs to go get it too even if you've done molding and casting it's the sort of thing when you read through it you'll pick up some new stuff for sure okay. i'm gonna try and go to i want i want to show people the humble bundle site but it keeps trying trying to log me in here we oh. go i've got it in my other browser i'll just read just read it out this is cool we've got uh, it even shows, too, that they've sold almost 5,000 bundles, which is awesome. If you go to... Let me see if I can just add this real quick. Mm -hmm. Let's... Oh, let's do... Uh, another browser. Display. And... Go to the Chrome. There it is. All right, there's the Humble Bundle. <laughs> And uh, it shows all the books. Uh, Make Magazine does their own publishing. So they have a bunch of them in there, including one that was an article by Adam Savage that's no longer available. This is the only way to get it. And you can get it wow. for just a dollar. And then you see uh, Harrison's book and some of Svetlana's books and mine. Uh, Sean Thorson's uh, Cos Cosplay in America by Egen, which is amazing. Uh, and then a Halloween special. Uh, and then when you scroll down at the bottom here, when you go to uh, pay, it, there's sliders, and you can pick how much money. So publishers would be the people that wrote the books, charity, and then humble tip. And as you move these sliders, you can figure out who gets what. You can give it all to charity. You can give it all to humble. You can give it all to me. You can do whatever you want. Um, and it's really cool. All right. Back to the questions. Good. Thanks for asking there, Matt. That's a good one. Okay, let's grab one from Chris from Broken Blade Workshop. He's working on a Soul Cinder costume from Dark Souls 3. I need to look this up because I don't know what that looks like. Um, It's it's from Dark Souls 3. Yeah, I guess I know which one. Okay, yeah. this is uh, a dude that's in armor, and it looks like he is on fire. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the main guy, I guess. Right? Yeah. Uh, I guess so. I don't know. I haven't played the game yet, but it is. It's armor. It's all ragged, and he is definitely at least partially on fire. Okay, good. Now that we're all caught up, let's see. Uh, he has enough experience to do almost anything from foam, but the chest piece and helmet are both something I'm, are a bit iffy. How would you suggest about these shapes, the shapes and details on these pieces? So I guess he's asking more, really more about pattern making. Do you have a favorite method for when you come when it comes to building patterns for like your chest armor or like helmets? Um, actually, I just uh, draw it on a piece of paper. So I I do my patterns just on a piece of paper, mm -hmm. and then I put it on my uh, on my dummy. And so I just do the basic patterns, and then actually build the armor first, the basic armor, and then later I. Um, just do the details. I gotcha. What yeah. do you use for a dummy? Is it just a uh, a sewing mannequin? Um, yeah, actually, those behind behind me, one of these. Oh, very good. Yeah. And then so I have three of those. Oh wow! And were you able to just find one uh, find ones that were similar to your your proportions? Uh, no, I bought one with uh, which you can adjust. Oh, very good. Shape. That's awesome. I need it's one of those. Uh, that's very good. Yeah, having a dummy to work from is uh, super, super helpful. Up on the screen right now, I've got your um, ebony armor build. So if people are okay. are interested in seeing how um, how the armor gets made like that, then that's a really good place to start. And the first picture is literally just a drawing that you did. I like that. Yeah. It's just figure out where all the details are because... Only to see the screenshots and the in-game uh, models, it was just too uh, difficult to figure it out. I so gotcha. I really have had to sketch it all out. I like that. I do blueprints for all of my props beforehand, and I, I consider drawing blueprints the first build. Like you actually yeah. kind of go through it in your head before you even start cutting out any material. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. Um, this is a really, really good tutorial. I'm, I'm looking through the whole, <laughs> the whole armor build right now. It looks fantastic. Here's a, here's a final photo for you guys to check out for all the armor. That's wonderful. Um, do you have uh, something similar for doing helmets? Do you have a, a head, a head form or anything like that? 
Um, it's it's just the same. You can <clears throat> you can check out the um, Khajiit and the Orc helmet on my website, and they also have a, a, a step by step build in there. Cool. Awesome. So you can oh, there see we go. Heavy Orc helmet. Perfect. Yeah. This is great. This is so easy. All I have to do is just keep bringing up, uh, bringing up uh, pieces of your website. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Just today, I um, someone tagged me on Facebook, uh -huh. and I just uh, went to their website and saw that they just built my um, ebony armor, and it looks just like mine. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. And they, they of course, use my tutorial. That's wonderful. So nice. Oh wow, you did the face on it too. That's amazing. Yeah. Well done. That's, that's the only thing I, um, I I mold and cast it. Yep. There yeah. you go. Well, I'll tell you what. That's awesome. Everyone go check that one out. We'll link to all these in the, the show notes. Um, but also, uh, you know, if getting a form, like a body form or a head form, we have a couple of videos on doing head casting um, or even just buying a head form like the ones that Monster Makers sell. Um, that's again, similar proportions to your own head so that you can start taking patterns off of those. That's going to help you out a ton. Um, but it's going to, it's going to be a lot of tinkering. You know, you, it's, you're probably not going to get it perfectly on the first try. So just be ready for that. Buy extra foam or buy extra material. Buy just everything extra. Oh, extra double of everything. Yeah. <laughs> Especially that. Um, and good luck. That's a very ambitious build. Um, uh, Chris, Chris from Bl Broken Blade Workshop. Very good. Great question. Okay. You be, you guys will be amazed. Like we got, I made a, a plaster torso of myself. Once you have something like that, your life gets a lot easier. So much yeah. easier. I guess I've seen this one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Venger has a question. He says, I've never heard the epic saga of how Warbla the Unrelenting defeated Master Crafter Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's curious why I don't use Warbla. Um, I just never, I don't know. I just started making things out of foam and that worked. So I didn't really try Warbla. I have nothing against it. <laughs> you do a lot of stuff with, with thermal, uh, thermal plastics. Um, yeah. I, I actually started with, um, resin first with everything cost related. And then I switched to, um, to my speed builds where I challenge myself to build things very fast. And yeah, I, use, I really use a lot of thermoplastics, but I switch to um, Cosplay Flex, if you mm -hmm. know this one. And um, now I'm trying foam, actually. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um, I think uh, the main draw for using thermoplastics is you don't need a lot of tools. But I I have a crap load of tools in there. Like I have band saws and sanders and I just got into this hobby with a background in building stuff, um, like more model making techniques and mm -hmm. um more I guess what you would say traditional making techniques. So right when I got in this, I'm like, I need a I need a scroll saw and I need um a belt sander and all of these heavy duty tools uh, that you use for more traditional materials. So I just got into it that way um, yeah. be before Warbla really kind of hit the scene, so to speak. Um, but if you, all you have is a pair of scissors and a heat gun, then Warbla is for you. Yeah. And also you don't have fumes with Warbla and That's cosplay right. flex because I tried to uh, last week, I finished my quiver from Skyrim and I realized, well, it does have fumes when you use the barge or something oh, like yeah. that. It's yeah. very unhealthy. No, it's not good to breathe in. So that's why. Yeah, especially if you're working in an apartment. Yep. That's what I do. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So it can be incredibly handy. I've got a whole shop. Here, I've got a picture of the um, of the uh, quiver that you built. Oh, yeah. And you said um, that was a... Uh, just get it because um, it's right there. If that's okay. Go for it. <laughs> you don't need to have a picture ready. <laughs> this is more more Skyrim stuff, of course. Um, and I think that's just great. Let's see. It's a quiver. Uh, yeah. So. There you go. Now, is that just for yourself for fun? Yeah, that, it was just for fun. It's fantastic. And is it all foam? 
Um, it's almost all foam. I because I was so afraid to work with foam first. Um, I did this this basic part here. If mm -hmm. you can see it, um, I did with foam and cosplay flex, and then I just went on with it because yeah, I I just thought why why being afraid uh, from foam? Just yeah. start, and the rest is all foam. Very also cool. the details, everything. Very so, cool. This is leather actually. Yeah. Awesome. And it's cool. It, yeah. It, it, it's it's really fun. Cool. Well, I've got some Warbler. I haven't used it yet. Maybe I'll branch out. Yeah. But for me, it's like I can just make something out of foam really fast because I have lots of foam already and I have all the tools I need. But I don't hate Warbler. Well, don't be spreading rumors. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> All right, thanks, Venger. Next one comes from our buddy Phoenix Revival. He's curious, Anna, uh, if you have any favorite conventions near where you live. Oh, in Switzerland. Okay, so we don't have really a lot. Yep, um, yep. My favorite is Fantasy Basel. It's from my hometown, so of course I love it. Yeah. And it's one of the biggest right now. And we have, um, what Tell Falkenstein has to say? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Right. No, that's the biggest one, and I really like it. And um, abroad, I like actually DragonCon very much. Oh, yeah. Now, because it was so much fun. And from the German ones, because we live near Germany, so we, of course, go to Germany uh, a lot. It's um, Gamescom was very fun. I got to make it to that at some point. I hear that's, that's a big yeah. one. It really is big, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Just in general, I need to go go back to Europe. It's been too long. Yeah, that's Fantasy Basel. That's from my hometown. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for sharing. Thanks for the question, Phoenix Revival. I got to remember to ask that whenever we have uh, guests on from around the world. What are the conventions <laughs> like where you live? All right. Grenthor the Mighty. Uh, he has a question. He says, What's a, what would you say is a good project for your first mold for someone who hasn't uh, made a mold before? That's a great question. Um, maybe I, something you can use a one-part mold. I so agree. It's that, that complicated. I also, um, I also bet you cover this in your book, Cast Like Magic. Yeah, I do. I cover this in my book, actually. <laughs> and what... What kind of object? I would say, I don't know, maybe a simple mask. Yeah. Maybe? A one part, like a brush on mask or like like um, like a pendant with one side that you could do a one part mold on would be really good. Um, trying to Sorry. think of an example. I've got, ooh, you know what I have right here? Mm. We 3D printed a Judge Dredd badge and the back of it's just flat. So you could clean this up glue it down, yeah. put a box around it, and make a mold of that. That would be a really good first project. A badge. Or or something like a buckle. Yes. Like a, the one I did for Skyrim. We did that for our Skyrim costumes. There's those rings. Oh, there you go. Oh, you even have something in there. Yeah. So that's an easy one. Maybe you can do this. Oh, definitely. For the um, armor you've got sitting behind you there, the ancient Nord armor, there yep. that armor has rings on it. Um, the and the same with the um, with the male version, the one that I built for me, and those yeah. rings are a one part mold that we did, which was very a very simple mold to make. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So there you go, one part molds, rings, buckles, badges, anything like that should be a really good first project. Yeah, which which has a flat back, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My first, the first mold I tried to make was a two part mold, and I did it out of urethane instead of silicone. So I did it out of a urethane rubber. I don't know why. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and it failed miserably. <laughs> I just I ruined the mold. I ruined the master. I ruined everything. <laughs> but everyone does mistake mistakes. I mean, I did a lot of newbie mistakes in the beginning, of course. Yep. And uh, that's just normal, I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah. The good thing about making those mistakes is that you'll never make them again. It's a, it's a, it's yep. a hard lesson to learn, but it's a very And you can write lesson. them down. Yes. And I wrote them down in my book. <laughs> All the mistakes. 
That's great. Uh, thanks, Grenthor the Mighty. Good question. Let's see here. Oh, uh, Sam, our, our buddy Sam over at BioCosplay, just in general, he says, do you enjoy more? What do you enjoy more, making armor or making props? Oh, hmm. God. That, that's a heavy question. It um, is. I would go with, oh, God, with props. Yeah. Yeah, with props. I think, I think so, too. I think there's just more props that I see, like, from video mm -hmm. games, where I just have a list. I'm like, I have to make that. I have to make that. I have to make that. Yep. It takes a lot for me to go that armor. Like I'm to I'm gonna invest a ton of time into making like that armor. Hmm. But there's a lot there. I my my list of props that I want to make is much yeah. much longer. But it's also great if you have a costume like a basic costume from Fallout or Skyrim. You could just add your props. Yeah, just keep making just keep making daggers from Skyrim until you've made all of them. All the iron daggers. Yes. Oh God. <laughs> Do you have any any props that you're looking uh, looking forward to making soon? Um, props. Oh, actually, I just want to finish my um, mod for the plasma pistol. Yeah, it's just one attachment like this. Okay. And um, the next prop, I I don't really know. I haven't thought of that yet. Okay. I'm working on the a big scout rifle from Destiny, um, doing all 3D printing. But I also I started one. And it's, I don't know when this is going to get done, but I have parts of an airsoft gun here that I took apart. And yes. I'm trying to make this into a Destiny gun. So this goes back together. And I, uh, I've i been 3D printing. This is just a passion project of mine. No one's paying me to do it. So I haven't found a lot of time for it. But I want to slide pieces onto it and modify it to look like a gun from Destiny. But... Um, I've run into some problems, so I, I this fits on there perfectly, except now it covers the trigger. I know that was a little little bit of an oversight in the design. <laughs> so Oops, okay. I need to fix that and reprint it and everything, but that, that, that. that's the sort of thing where I was playing Destiny one night, and I got that gun, and I was like, ooh, I bet I could fit that on an airsoft gun. <laughs> and that, that itch was just like, oh, now I have to do that. And the next day I started, uh, I started working on it. So that's, that's that. So yeah, I I lean towards props too. Yeah. Do, do you also have this problem, Bill? Um, when you play, when you have finished your props and you go back to gaming and you just play one or two days and then you oh. see something new, you're like, oh my god, I need to do this. Yep. And you're yep. off to prop making yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I guess I'm diving down that rabbit hole. Uh, for sure but that's i mean that's why i got into this in the first place because i saw a thing that i had to have and i yep. and now i now i have all the tools i need to make it so i have no excuses perfect good question sam good question next one comes to us from chris he's working on something from fallout 4 the revolutionary sword and he's wondering what would be the best core to support it it's a long thin blade uh i just have to look this up okay right. revolutionary sword um okay i have a, just fall out. i've got an image it's a very plain sword um oh yeah okay, okay yeah okay. oh oh god maybe um I don't know. It depends on what you want to do with it. Maybe LARPing, or is it just for display, or is it for a convention? Mm -hmm. uh, everything depends on that. And if you want to have this uh, for a convention, I would recommend to have foam build, maybe yeah. a foam yeah. blade made. And if you want to have this as a display piece, you can make it out of resin. Maybe. Yeah, those are. I, I like that you point out depending on what you want to do with it because if you make a, a a long blade like that and you it's resin and you support it with say a piece of aluminum or steel on the inside and you bring that to a convention they may tell you you can't bring it in yeah exactly yeah um if it were foam you may be able to get away with like getting a piece of aluminum like a flat like an eighth inch thick piece of aluminum and sandwiching mm -hmm. foam outside of that um, but it gets, it comes to a really fine point though. You don't want there to be a pointy piece of aluminum in there. You want it to be nice and rounded off. 
Yep. Yeah. Or uh, Angie Piper in the chat says a fiberglass rod or a steel rod would be pretty good. That's true. <laughs> you can get flat pieces of carbon fiber too, or, or, or fiberglass. Like. Or you can just flatten out a, a pipe. That's what I did for my uh, ebony blade. Yeah. You can see this on my website too. That's a uh, like a PVC pipe, like a plastic pipe. Yeah, and I just flattened it out. So just heat it up and like whack it with a hammer. Uh, yeah, sort of like that, like a like a smith. Yeah, it's almost exactly like a smithing. You said the ebony blade. Uh, yeah, it was the ebony blade. All right, I'll have to find that. And oh, there it is. I found it. Yay! Cool. Oh yeah, sure enough, you got a PVC pipe and you just heat it, heat it up and flatten it. Perfect. Exactly. Once again, too, though, if you're bringing that to a convention, it's it's possible that they won't let you in with that. So check with whatever convention you're going to and see what their rules are yeah. about it. I know that New people just went to New York Comic Con and they're really really specific about the the rule the weapon rules for what they'll let in. And so they're like foam, totally cool. Cardboard, totally cool. But like plastics and resins are like on the fence. Mm -hmm. So you'll want to you want to check ahead of time. Oh. All right. Good luck with that build, Chris. And go check out that uh, the ebony blade build that Anna did. All right. Ang Piper has a question. He says he finds uh, with latex props when they're finished. Um, how do you stop them from being tacky and sticking together? That, that's latex props. Yeah, um, I've never done latex props, so that's what the the main way I like to seal up my foam props is with latex. So this is all EVA foam, but it's it's sealed and coated with latex rubber, which is very flexible and durable, and I love it. But it does stay tacky, and it will want to stick to one another. Um. Hmm. But if you want to seal it so it's not tacky anymore, spray varnish or any varnish. I just buy it in a spray can. But varnish dries really flat, fast. It's clear and it's flexible, and it will get rid of the uh, it'll get rid of the tackiness. Oh, <laughs> in the chat, uh, Phoenix Revival got bingo. Congratulations, Phoenix Revival. For those of you guys that don't know, we the chat plays a bingo game. They have a list of things, and I guess latex rubber was like the last thing to check off. It doesn't happen very often, but someone got bingo. Congratulations. Oh, <laughs> and so what about uh, flex bond? Um, you two? Yeah, flex bond, we tried that out. It's very similar to Mod Podge. It does not flex the way that rubber does. Like oh, that. okay. Yeah, like this is ridiculously flexible. It stretches and it doesn't crease or, or wrinkle. No, good to know. Yeah, flex bond is is pretty great. I just I am very I am not <laughs> easy on my props. I beat the crap out of them, so that's why I love latex rubber. Oh God, okay. <laughs> well, I'm I'm very protective of my of my props. Yeah. So it's like, oh my God, okay, no. Yeah. Spray varnish, Ang Piper spray varnish. That'll it'll help you out. Or brush on varnish. Either way, varnish. You can get it at art supply stores. We have we have one more question. This one comes to us unless Brittany found some more. Sarah wants to know: uh, Have you thought about replicating large quantities of your props and selling them uh, in booths? So, I mean, you sell kits and stuff, right? Um, I actually only sell one kit, but I yeah. don't sell it anymore because it's the Elder Scroll. Mm -hmm. And um, I only sell finished props. I got gotcha, you. So I got gotcha. someone orders props, I finish them up and send them to them. Very cool. But it would be probably um, I don't know. I don't want to mass produce it and and then sell them uh, at conventions. And also, I can't really because you know Bethesda. Right. The challenge, mm -hmm. and people ask me this all the time too. Like I put up, a, I did a video where I built. Um, um, like the Mr. Handy is a good example. The little, little figure that I made, I made molds of that and people wanted to buy them. Um, mm. and I could make and sell kits or finish pieces of that, which I've done in the past. Um, yep. the challenge is, um, at some point, if you're going to do that, you have to get a license from the people that own the IP, which isn't 
isn't outside the realm of possibility, but usually they're going to want you to do 500 of them, like a lot of them, if you're going to get a license. And suddenly you, you can't do that in your basement or in your apartment. Suddenly the production cost and the overhead is out of this world for a small time production like your shop or like our shop. Now there are shops that do that kind of fabrication in production. So you could partner with another company to do that. But you have to ask yourself as a business owner, is that what I want to do with my business? Yeah. So that's yes. Do you want to do just um 500 casts in one or two weeks or do you want to build props? Right. I mean, like you, like, it, like if if i had to make 500 of anything in my shop that's all my shop would do for a year that would be you know that's yeah. not what i want to do and also the, the cool thing like you you um finish and paint the props that you sell there's something cool about getting something that was hand done by you there's yeah, it's a cool. it's a boutique thing it's it's a, yeah. a novelty yes um so th those are all the things to consider um, when it comes to trying to sell things en masse. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, there are a lot more considerations too, especially when you're trying to run a business and especially when you're trying not to upset people that own the intellectual property. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, very important. Or you get um, cease and desist, yep. maybe. So just be careful. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the main reasons why we don't actually sell props anymore. We, we sell books and videos and, and techniques to teach people how to make their own thing. Because we, have, we now have thousands of people that want the things that we make. But, but um, there's a middle ground there where it's like I can either make a handful of them or I have to make thousands of them okay. and get, a, and get a, um, uh, a license. But that middle ground is like there's not a lot of room for me to actually run a business at that point, but I still want people to get the things that they want. So instead I teach people how to make them for themselves. Perfect. Yes. Um, Ooh, we have another one. We have a question from Lon. Sure. Let's see. He's experimenting with neoprene. He's been brushing it on and it works great, but it's very thin, uh, but it's waterproof. Uh, Oh, he says because it's waterproof, subsequent coats tend to beat up. Have you done more experiments with neoprene? No, we really haven't. <laughs> Sorry to say, Lon. We have yeah. some, and I want to experiment more. I think one of the next costumes I build, I'm going to coat in neoprene, and I'll, I'll learn more about it then. But I haven't done much with it since we did our foam sealing video. Neo, neoprene is a rubber, uh, an air drying rubber similar to latex. But yeah. people who have latex allergies can use neoprene, which is awesome. Wow. Um, cool. Yeah. So there you go, Lon. Sorry, I don't have more information for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, Sarah had another question. Um, uh, have you, have I, obviously I've worked with a 3d printer. Mine's working right now, but, uh, Anna, have you ever thought about doing anything with 3d printing? Um, I've seen a lot of, um, artists going into 3d printing. Um, they can, of course, if they want, but I actually, um, I'm working nine to six during the day and usually I'm working uh, with a computer every day. So when I come home, I actually really want to have something doing with my hands. So I can't really um, do models, 3D models on a PC again. So it's just, I would be all the time on a, in front of a PC. Yeah. I prefer uh, building things with my hand. Yeah. There's something to be said about getting your hands dirty, uh, yeah, building definitely. stuff. And we do lots of 3D printing now, and I've, I've, I'm really enjoying it. Um, but you're right. If I spend all day in front of a computer, like the last thing I want to do is spend the rest of my evening in front of a computer. There's something great about just getting a floor mat, just carving it into pieces and gluing it together and getting paint all over your hands. <laughs> yeah. So especially when you have a job like I have, um, uh, I'm a media designer. Mm -hmm. And so I really, I'm in front of a computer the whole day. And when I come home, exactly, I want to build something. That's something awesome. Real. Very cool. Uh, that was our last question. Uh, thank you guys in the chat so much for bringing such awesome questions. I know I say that every week, but you guys are great. And we really appreciate you guys bringing the content. And Anna, thank you so much for hanging out with us for the last hour. And thank helping you. Us out. Thank you for uh, having me. 
in yeah. your questions and answers. Absolutely. Once again, everyone, go to folkinstall.com. Go check out like Folk Install Armory on Facebook. Go buy the book, Cast Like Magic. I just read it this morning, and it's wonderful. Lots of good uh, casting, uh, molding and casting tips there. Worth every penny, so go get that right now. And uh, other than that, I think we're good to go. We okay. did a great, we did a great job today. Everyone, high five up top. Yay. <laughs> Thanks again, and we will see everyone else next week on Prop Live. Cool. All right. <laughs>